Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game for Scratch, and today we're going to be checking out a free and open source voxel-based application. So if you wanted to create voxel art, that being volumetric pixels, or if you think about it, building with virtual Lego. Well, there is one major established program out there, and that is Magic of Voxel, but we're not talking about Magic of Voxel today. In fact, we are talking about Goxel. I'm going to call it Goxel, Goxel, I'm going with Goxel for the rest of this video, you name it as you wish. But it's G-O-X-E-L, if you're interested in checking this one out, it's available at G-O-X-E-L.xyz. Uh, pretty straightforward, and one of the big things that it has going for it, other than being of course free and open source, is the platforms it's on. It is available for Windows, it is available for Mac, it's available for Linux, but it's also on iOS and Android. So if you want to do voxel development on the go, this is the best choice that's out there, at least as far as I know. There's also a live version directly in the browser. So if you want to just go ahead and check this out, head on over to Joxel, Goxel, Goxel, whichever, um, and then click web version here and you can check it out there. Uh, it is, as I mentioned earlier on, an open source project. Uh, it's under the GPL v3 license. Uh, they do pretty consistent releases. So the last one was back in August of last year. Um, it's uh, actively under development. The last commit was uh, 12 days ago. So definitely some movement going on there as well. I think this is mostly the work of one man uh, in terms of code. Uh, it's a mix of C and C++. And by the way, in this example, you're going to see some models in action. I am using these ones. It enables you to bring in uh, other file format versions. I brought in the Vox versions of uh, Mini Mike's Metro Minis. Uh, so if you want, you can check this repository out. It's available up on GitHub. And without further ado, let us go check out Goxel or Goxel or Goxels. Um, here you can see it in action. Uh, you've got this kind of plane to work on, and you're painting in individual cubes. So here you can see painting them like so. Come on over here, we've got the tools that are available. Uh, you've got a number of pretty nice tools. You can actually paint in shapes if you wish. you got a couple different shapes. So if you want to paint cylinders, you can paint cylindrical shapes like so. Uh, you also have the ability to do things like extrude. So if we have a shape we like, we can go ahead and pull it out. Uh, we can do that in different axes as well. I actually find that uh, this program is probably a bit more streamlined than Magic of Voxel. Uh, you can also turn this grid off if you wish. You've also got the ability to create uh, planes um, within the scene. So let me just shape the plane so like so and then we can start actually drawing directly on that plane as well so if you look here in space you're going to see we are drawing along that plane uh, you do have the ability to come in here you can change the palette so you can have a fixed color palette you've got a number of palettes to find if you want to work from them i do believe you can create your own palettes as well uh, this is obviously the color of the individual uh, voxels that you are going to paint. You can recolor existing voxels as well. We go back up to the tools. You've got nice tools here for say selection, uh, box selection and so on. You can draw in a line. Uh, we can actually go ahead and move things that we have created. You can see there's axis manipulators there. You're noticing we've got one solid creation here. Well, you've also got layer tools here. So you could create multiple different layers. You could turn things or selections into shapes. Uh, those things can all have materials. Materials are all controlled right here. So you've got the ability to define the metallic and roughness, emission, and opacity of any particular material. Uh, so we could create a new material here. We could give it metallicness, roughness, and so on, and then apply it to said object. So here, for example, we could switch this one to material two, and you immediately see the results in action there. You also have control over the lighting in your scene. Now, what I'm going to do is switch over to a scene that actually looks good. So I'm going to come in here. We're going to import a or open. No, I'll do an import. All right, so import. And I downloaded that repository I showed you earlier, the MMMMS one. Uh, so I'm going to import in magical voxel format. So you see here, you got a couple of different voxel options there. Uh, this was in my uh, temp folder, mm, like so. Uh, we'll go down here, go to the Vox section. And you see here, there's just a ton of uh, voxels here. I'm going to go ahead with, I think they're called scenes. I'm going to create a scene. Uh, I'm going to use the scene I used in my, yeah, so scene, and then there's one here called Riot. And I'm just picking this because this is what I used for my thumbnail. So you can see Magic of Vox file. We'll go ahead and open that one up like so. And here you can see it in action. Now you can see it actually built up. So we have the uh, other work we did earlier on. So what I'm going to actually do, I can come up here, go new, and we'll get rid of everything. And now I'll bring that one in. So let's do, uh, bring that in again. So we don't have our existing scene over top. So let's go down here and scene riot 
Uh, predictor riot. All right, so here we go. Now you can notice we have a, a bit of a cube in the middle of our scene. Probably not the perfect setting that you want here. Uh, so we actually have controls over that. It's available under view. Uh, we can come down here and say hide box, and then we have adjust our scene available. Um, so yeah. You can easily move in and out. So obviously I can come in here, I can start recoloring individual things here. Uh, we also have some tools, again, for lighting. I was showing you that earlier on. We can control the pitch of the lighting. You can see the effects of the shadowing as I move that. The yaw, the intensity of the lighting, the shadows created, how dark they're going to be, and the amount of ambient light in the scene are all controllable there. Uh, you can change where the camera is. You can change the perspective the camera sees from, like so. And of course, you've got control over yaw and pitch of that camera as well, like so. And the distance of the camera as well from the scenes. You can switch it to an orthographic camera. Uh, I'm not 100% certain what image is for. Uh, you have the ability to render out, so we can pick the width and the height. Uh, we can set up how to render the sky, uh, the floor, the lighting in the scene, and we could go ahead and render out there to a rendered image, or we can export it out to a variety of different formats. In terms of the formats that are supported, we see here we've got things like uh, PNG slices, voxels, object, uh, polygon, text format, PNG, magic of voxel, and so on. Let's say we wanted to move this into a game. We're gonna use this in a game engine. We wanted to use this in Blender or something to that effect. Go ahead and export that out as a GLTF, and we'll go ahead and say, okay, export, and we will call this my scene. And I will drop that on my desktop like so. And now let's fire up Blender. So as is always the way, sacrifices need to be made. Default cube, it has been nice knowing you. Goodbye. All right, so what we're going to do is import in our scene. So go to File, Import, and I'll head on down here. By the way, GLTF format is supported directly in the Unity game engine and the Godot game engine. I'm not 100% certain if it's out of the box in Unreal, but I do believe by plugins it is there as well. Uh, but we're just going to bring it into Blender in this case. We're going to go here now to my desktop, find my scene.gltf, and go ahead and import it. Now, there you go. Now, one thing you're going to want to be aware of here, this here is a polygonal scene at this point. This is no longer voxels. It is composed of several different polygon segments. So you can see here, I can move them out. They're all kind of snapped together, but they are not welded. One of the options when you import it is to actually weld things together if you so wished. Now, obviously, it looks a little bit different, and that is just because we need to render some lighting here. Let's render our light. Look at our scene there. So there is the uh, blender result. There is the original. So your color and saturation are a little bit different, but that's just a matter of setting that up in uh, your environment of choice. But otherwise, yeah, it's a pretty easy way of creating uh, art and scenes if this is a style you like. If you want to bring them in here, say for uh, finishing or animation or whatever, easily bring them into your tool of choice. GLTF exporter works quite well. Also, you could bring them into Magic of Voxel. So if you like the workflow of one program more so than the other program, uh, they are quite easily interchangeable by a common file format that imports properly. You're going to notice things brought in as a network of meshes like so. Um, yeah, pretty straightforward on the whole. Uh, and again, you could weld these all together or we could just basically combine them all using a modifier. Nothing really difficult involved there. So again, as you see, start with this and with that. Makes it really easy to create in your games. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is Goxel. Goxel. I I'll go with Goxel again. Um, I, the real kind of key thing here, one of the, the coolest things here that, again, it's open source and it's free, which is both very, very nice. Uh, but it's also, in addition to being all the desktop platforms, available on iOS and Android, which if you're working in a mobile environment, you may particularly enjoy that aspect. And in fact, if you scroll down here, you can actually see a video of using uh, like an Apple Pencil on a iPad Pro to do voxel art. So if you're looking for an on-the-go tool, this could be a good choice. On top of that, again, you do have a number of uh, file forms formats exportable, including build engine support, uh, which is kind of interesting, uh, an on number platform, unlimited scene size. So again, if you are looking to create a voxel based video game, Goxel could be a good tool to add to your toolbox. And one last neat thing, if you just want to check this out, but you don't want to download anything or anything like that, just come on in here, click web version right here. And you're going to see it's the exact same tool running in your browser. So if you want to start creating voxels right here, you can 
and do so directly on the web. So not only do you have desktop platforms, iOS and Android, you also have a web version available right here. So ladies and gentlemen, that is Goxel. If you want to grab it for yourself, it's available at goxel.xyz. As I mentioned earlier on, this is also a free and open source package. Uh, so uh, the code is out there. It's under the GPL license. So that means you're not going to spin this off and um, not contribute code to an ongoing project. There are definitely limitations to GPL, but if you're not touching the source code at all, they don't affect you in the slightest. And again, if you're interested, the demo that we saw in action here comes from Mike Loves Robots. Uh, and thank you for making this repository available for free. Uh, those are also available, oops, uh, in FBX. Eh, come on, back we go, back we go. Available in FBX and also uh, Unity and Collada versions in addition to the Vox format. So if you want to grab those in different environments, they are available there as well. As you can see, there are, these have been around for a number of years. Uh, but if you were looking for uh, voxel CD type art to work from, this is uh, a really cool repository. And the one that I featured here, uh, they are under the... Creative Commons CC, CCA4 uh, license. So you can see the limitations of that license available right here. But the star of today's show is Goxel. If you're looking for an alternative to Magic of Voxel or you want to do something on the uh, go, definitely a great one to check out. And that is it. Let me know what you think of Goxel. And beyond Goxel and Magic of Voxel, is there a uh, Voxel tool that you would highly recommend, highly recommend me checking out? Or do you hate the whole Voxel thing? Uh, that's a perfectly legit opinion as well. But let me know what you think. Comments down below, and I shall talk to you all later. Goodbye.